months from now, only one team will have a chance to lift the trophy as the USL Championship title winners. But tonight on opening night, 24 teams begin their seasons full of hope, including the Oakland Roots as they host Indy 11. Happy to have you with us this evening alongside Manchester United great Gary Bailey. I'm Joe Malfa. Gary, these two teams, different years last year. Oakland on the outside of the playoffs looking in. For Indy, it was the club's return in the playoffs after a few years away. Yeah, one big difference for me, goals against Column Oakland Roots, 10 more goals conceded. Indy were quite tight in defense, and that set up a platform for them to make the playoffs for Oakland Roots. They're going to have to improve defensively this season. And defensively, they did make those improvements, and those defenders are going to have their hands full tonight with Augie Williams, the big offensive acquisition for Indy 11. Dominated the Eastern Conference last year at Charleston, now employs his trade in Indy. Yeah, fantastic striker. He can shoot, he can head. And his quick reflex, look at that, he shoots and then on the rebound scores and he's quick up front as well. He is a fantastic signing for Indy 11. Tenth all-time in the USL all-time goals chart. No doubt he will continue to climb that as this season goes along. And Oakland, as I mentioned, made over their back line completely. Four big signings along that back line. I want to point out two of them. Camden Riley coming over from San Diego and Gagi Margvalashvili coming over from Georgia. Those two will anchor the middle of that back line. Yeah, Gagi in particular is a fantastic signing. He's got great experience in Europe at a very, very high level. And Cam Riley comes in from San Diego Loyal. You know, you can you can chuck in the likes of Niall Logue as well there at the back. And a lot of experience coming in. And that might solve the problem for Oakland Roots because if they're defensively tight, you do fancy them to score goals. They struggled at home last year, Oakland. And now they get to begin 2024 at home to try and right some of those wrongs. A cross-conference matchup to begin 2024 for the Oakland Roots and Indy 11. It's coming up next from Pioneer Stadium. Tonight's match is presented in part by Anthem Blue Cross. Yeah, and our lineup's brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. We're here today with the Oakland Roots and Anthem Blue Cross. Spreading random acts of kindness. Improving the health and wellness of our communities. Es por eso que Anthem Blue Cross y Oakland Roots se unieron. allows us to show up in a very different, unique way and actually a very cool way uh, and be embedded as part of the community. Do you like getting cash back on your credit card? A free coffee when you fill your cafe's punch card? A complimentary dessert with your restaurant order? Then you'll like getting a 5% discount on your electricity with Ava Community Energy's Bright Choice service. Visit avaenergy.org to learn more about Ava's low rates for electricity. You've earned this, so hold it up high. This isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. You find diamonds in the rust to put your own stamp on stock parts, turning metal into murals and detailing every detail because it's the things you make that show what you're made of. You are a fighter and this is your reward. Medellin, the mark of a fighter. Tonight's match is presented in part by Anthem Blue Cross and Modelo. Time to meet the first starting 11s of 2024 for both of these sides. Oakland, we touched on their main over back line. You see all three new guys in there. Logue, Mark Velasquez, and Riley all next to each other. Yeah, playing that sort of 5-3-2 or 5-2-3, depends how you want to see it. Uh, Sherry up front, looking forward to seeing him play. He's the one they're going to hope is going to score a ton of goals for them. Of course, Johnny Rodriguez is their top goal scorer anyway, just behind there in a supporting role and Neville Hackshaw, the man who's going to anchor that midfield. 
Indy 11's 11. I avert your eyes to the top three. That's going to be dangerous all season long. Williams, Guenzati, and Henderlong out of college, fresh into the starting 11. Absolutely. Augie Williams has already proved it, as has Guenzati. We'll see how Henderlong does. Looking forward to seeing him play. It's a solid midfield as well. Blake and Lindley pushing forward. And then, as we've already said, they're a good defensive side in D11. And uh, it's going to be an exciting match. Douglas Martinez will join that front three as the year goes along. He's injured to begin the season, but they have very high hopes for what the attack can bring here in 2024. They scored 18 goals in six preseason matches, so flying out of the gates in the 11. Can they carry it though over into the regular season now as we're set to begin? Oakland was very happy with their preseason as well. Cherry and Rodriguez up top were pouring in goals. They got some help from the midfield as well. Lindo Mafeka was injured tonight, but they started to get things going in preseason. And they're ready to play the actual games now. The ones that matter, the ones that count, the ones that come November, come October, come September, you'll be looking back. Did we pick up three there? Did we pick up one there? And it all begins right here in the 11 Oakland Roots underway in 2024. Indy in their reds from left to right, Oakland in their blacks from right to left. Along with Gary Bailey, I'm Joe Malba, happy to have you with us as we begin 2024. And it's Indy right on to the attack. Cam Lindley had it blocked. Navelle Hackshaw sporting the captain's armband now for the Oakland Roots after the departures of Emra Clementa and Jojo Nane from the playing ranks. He's an assistant coach now. It's such an exciting time of the year, just watching the players kicking off and just wondering what's going through their minds. You know, it's a new coach in Indy's case with Sean McCauley. It's new players. I mentioned quite a few of them already. They want to impress on debut. There's players who've been there a while who are hoping this is the season. They make it to the championship final and win it. There's so many emotions swirling around amongst both sets of players and Really excited to see how it pans out over the next eight months. A lot of the same faces for Oakland. We highlight some of the new guys who've come in on that back line and Sherry up top next to Rodriguez, but so much of the core is still there. Same could be said for Indy. Team that made the playoffs last year. They found the spots they needed to patch up and improve a bit more. But a lot of familiar faces on both sides. Looking ahead for Cherie. Well, that's a name that USL fans may quickly get acquainted with. Mish Nader Cherie. This is technically his first professional club season match of his career. 26 year old from Haiti. He's previously with Violette in Haiti. Number 27 looking for it here. Almost falls to Rodriguez instead and put in right out of the gate by Jesse El Cedeno. A flying start for the Roots in 2024. That's a brilliant start. Look at that. Just two minutes and thereabouts on the clock, and they're already in the lead, the home side. The fans loving it, but so quick to pounce. And had a good break down the right-hand side. Ball whipped into the box. You can see that Mish Nader Shari was just waiting to see if he could unleash that, and instead, it falls to Sedenia, but have a look at the build-up here down the right-hand side. Nice little neat interplay. That ball whipped in there, and as it comes back, quick response, and nothing really that Ertl can do about this ball. It gets tucked into the corner, comes through some bodies with pace. Goalkeeper beaten. Great start for Oakland Roots. Fans loving every second of it. Sedenio had three goals last season. Joined Oakland mid-year from Hartford in a swap that set Eduardo Rito. Hartford's way. And now he gets things going in 2024. And already, Gary, just on that opening goal, you alluded to it. Sherry didn't get a touch to it, but there was so much attention drawn to him on the top of the six yard box that it left that void that Sedanio filled in. And Johnny Rodriguez as well was just hovering to see if he could get on the end of it. So you're right, the defense focusing on those two players and Sedanio could just pick up the pieces, but. Question now is, what can Indy do in response? 
And that goal was a $100 donation to the Berkeley Humane Society, generously donated by their partner, LJ Cruz. Donate or adopt a shelter pet at berkeleyhumane.com. Let's go Roots. Mish Niner Sherry, as I was just starting to mention, comes from Haiti, where he played for Violette. Any true fan who's deep in the weeds knows that club name. They were the side, the amateur side from Haiti, that made the surprise run and the upset in CONCACAF Champions League last year, upsetting Austin of Major League Soccer in the opening round, losing to the eventual champions, Club Leon, in the second round. And they had just a couple of subs. They hadn't played in about 10 months because of the turmoil in the country could barely train and here comes Cherie scores a brace in the opening leg against Austin scores a brace in the second leg against Club Leon all four goals scored with his head this is the first time he's really been a part of a professional team but he's got out there in that high level competition in Champions League and scored four goals so they have a lot of high hopes for him there's a lot of raw talent that needs refining but he's been in the mix now for a few months and they think they have a special potentially uh, long-term star here in USL Championship well, he's someone they're going to need because last season wasn't a great one for Oakland Roots, so very poor end to the season. They looked good up until about two-thirds of the way through. I think the last ten games, they got two draws and eight losses, something like that. It was really a bad end, so Noah Delgado will know that he has to get something going this season, and a lot of it's going to fall on the shoulders of Mishnaida Sheri, along with Johnny Rodriguez. If they can hit a ton of goals, it could be Oakland Roots' year. And Stanley and Cam Lindley were set for a free kick, but Elton Garcia wants to have a word before we get to that. So we'll take a look at tonight's injury report brought to you by UCSF Health and UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital. Three names on that list for Indy to begin the season. They hope none of them are long-term, and it seems to be positive reports on most. Same goes for Lindo Mefeka of the Oakland Roots. Also of note for the Roots missing tonight, Memo Diaz. He had a red card in the season finale last year against El Paso. That carries over to tonight, so they're missing him tonight as well. Just by the way, Danny and Barbier going from the Roots to Indy. Injured, he would have loved to have played here today, no doubt. I'm sure he had some impacts in the week of preparation, helping his new teammates out. Shaw guides it away. Gibson nods it back, another new face in a new place that was actually an old face in an old place. Previously with Indy, then to Louisville, now back to Indy. Looking for... Benzani, and it's on top of the netting for a goal kick. Only player from 2023 that made an all-league team for the Roots was the goalkeeper, Paul Blanchett. They hope he has to make less saves, though, in 2024. <laughs> it's a good thing as a goalkeeper to make saves, Gary. You know this, but you'd still rather face fewer shots. He had 114 saves last year. It was nearly a league record. I don't think he wants to make that many again. I think he'd rather quiet nights where it's two or three shots on goal tops. Yeah, he's only second behind, I think, Rio, Rio Snova with 116 saves, but you're 100% right. You want to make certain saves, but you don't want to make too many because then there's a question marks about your defense. And what did we ended up calling him? Paul the Wall? He had such a good season, absolutely fantastic. But, you know, with, with Gargi in particular in front of him and Cam Riley and Nile Logue, you've got three really solid central defenders, and that's... That's the, the foundation on which Noah Delgado is building this team. Long throw ahead, looking for Guenzani. There was a shout for a handball there. And it's out for a corner. looking on first year head coach of this indie side interesting path he took to get to indy smattering of players around blanchette corner whipped in it's rodriguez helping out defensively to get it away second chance to whip a ball in though now for lindley Graciano, rodriguez and tamacas 
they're just struggling to get their foot on the ball Oakland Roots have come under pressure since they've scored but here's a, a chance to get some green grass in front of them Jai Abukar Jai looking for Rodriguez came off his shoulder Daciano brings it down Ahead for Augie Williams. Big ticket acquisition from Charleston. Slots it centrally for Jack Blake. Back for Williams. Flag stays down. Took a deflection. Williams' second effort. Gobbled up by Blanchett, but that's how quickly he can turn something seems like nothing into something dangerous. Yeah, Augie Williams on that right hand side. A good run to start that move off and gets the ball back. Doesn't quite connect with it. Doesn't give. Paul Blanchett, too much to worry about, but you're right, it's the it's the threat of what he can do and what he might still do in this match. Back to Sean McCauley in his first year in charge of Indy 11. Wants to come in and win right away. That is not something he minced words about. But given away by Hackshaw uncharacteristically now. It's Blake looking through. Bailed out on the back end by Denaciano. McCauley comes in was the interim head coach for Minnesota United and MLS at the end of last season. They were going to have him go through all of 2024 with the interim tag. Still, they wouldn't remove it from him. So he said, you know what? I don't want this hanging over my head. I'm going to go pursue this opportunity. And he was hired by Indy 11 a little bit late in the process on January 8th. So he had to come in, get his bearings, get his players in. But he said he was very familiar with the league because part of his job was recruitment, scouting from USLC who could make that jump to MLS. So he was very familiar with the league and excited for this opportunity. Oh, he's, he's going to be like all coaches under pressure from the get-go. So one of the toughest leagues every year, have a look at it. Nearly half the coaches have moved on for one reason or another. One or two to more ambitious things such as Juan Guerra going to the MLS, but a lot of them just they couldn't do the job and they get moved on and somebody else gets a chance. Neville Hackshop, captains aside this year, Trinidad and Tobago International. We'll miss him in a couple of weeks already with some national duty. It's through for Johnny Rodriguez, nearly taken by Adrian Dispey. All league player for Indy last year, all league second team, along with his teammate Cam Lindley, who's on it now. Lindley, nice ball through for Budati. Eunice Budati behind Guenzani. Still was there for Blake. Jack Blake had a couple of goals in preseason. Number 18 goals in six matches for Indy. Most of it came from that front three of Williams, Guenzani, and Douglas Martinez, but Coach McCauley was quick to point out that they had some help from the midfield, and it was Blake supplying that midfield support offensively. Yeah, very positive preseason for Indy, but to be fair, they were mostly against lower level teams, but that's the sort of confidence that Sean McCauley, McCauley was trying to build in the team, and certainly with the amount of goals they scored, they should be confident in front of goals right now. The light and dark green striped elephant in the room, by the way, if you remember from last year. Uh, this is a different playing surface here at this stadium for the Oakland Roots. It was their old pitch from the old Laney Stadium that they've now had migrated over to Pioneer Stadium. So if you're turning it on for the first time in 2024 <laughs> and saying this looks a little bit different, you're right, it does. But it's still an older surface that they're more comfortable with. They are happy to get this migrated over for this season. been some good pressure from Indy 11 this first 12 minutes or so yes they are 1-0 down but in general they've looked slightly more threatening coming down the flanks getting balls into the box controlling possession just that one moment for Oakland Roots when they got that strike from Sedeno to beat Ertl but very impressed with Indy's management of the ball and here switching play as well for Gibson where's the captain's armband tonight but Sean McCauley was quick to point out, and we noticed that you and I, Gary, when we looked at the roster for this Indy team and how they've made it over, there's a lot of captains on this team, mm. guys who have been captains elsewhere or could come in and be that alpha captain type on this team. So Gibson gets the armband tonight, but they plan to maybe pass it around as the year goes along, and they have an opportunity again from the corner for the second time tonight. He was mentioning Cam Lindy, 
and uh, Callum Chapman Page, also leaders on the team. It's a very well balanced side, good defensively, good strikers, strong control of midfield. And this match is, if you're an Oakland Roots fan, this match is a long way from over. I think this is a, a tough, tough Indy 11 side. We're going to fight extremely hard to get back onto level terms. Oakland fans know all too well how things can change late in games. Two years ago, they were the Cardiac Roots winning games late. Last year, there were a handful of games they lost late. Whipped in from the corner. At the back post, Williams was waiting for it. And another corner on the way. A brief shout for a handball, but it seemed like Njai had his hand behind his back. Uh, just look at the number of bodies in the ball, or, uh, in the box rather, around Paul Blanchett. It's very difficult for the keeper. They've piled almost everybody in there. The red shirts, and of course, that attracts the black shirts to mark them. And see if they do it again. When the ball comes in, just look at the numbers around the keeper and how difficult it is for him to come and fetch the ball. Aiden Stanley comes over. And Swinger with his left foot. Well deposited right in that area of traffic. And the volley wide from Lindley. Paul Blanchett did well to find an alleyway through and punch it away. He did, under a lot of pressure. Had to come over a few heads, got a decent punch. And again, he's had a, fan, a fantastic season last season. One of the star players of Oakland Roots. Coming out of the back with Niall Logue. Given away by Njai. Gwenzadi. Seemed like it might have been a handball against Hackshaw. Hit his upper arm near the elbow, but he definitely chicken winged it out a little bit to block it. <laughs> that did. was definitely not a natural position. You can see Gwenzardi <laughs> afterwards was not happy. He was turning to the referee to give him a piece of his mind. A good veteran move from the former Indy 11 player. Spent four seasons with the club, Novell Hackshaw. Chapman Page has to thread it through. And it's out of play. 2024 season tickets are still available. Get the most benefits and lowest prices by securing your season ticket package for the rest of the year. To secure your tickets, visit us at oaklandrootssc.com slash tickets or call 510-488-1144. Here's the goal scorer, Cedeno, officially down in the third minute. Cherie. Mishnah Air Cherie. Balls for Johnny Rodriguez. That's a new look for the Roots here in 2024. So often last year it felt like their striker was on an island, whether it was Rodriguez or whether it was Anwar Palais. But this year, Noah Delgado opting to, out of the gates at least, try the two striker look. See what comes of it. Jai. Hackshaw. Pasquanzati. Fed out for Tamakas. Now Cedeno with a goal already. Jesse Cedeno almost a sweet bit of nutmeg through on the end line. <laughs> Hampton Riley. Two players on this field tonight over from San Diego who have gone on the wayside. Jack Blake on the Indy side, Cam Riley on the Oakland side. It's going to be interesting as this year goes along to see where some of those players pop up and how they impact their new squads. Yeah, such a pity to see the end of San Diego Loyal. What a brilliant match against Phoenix Rising they had in the playoffs and lost that in extra time. And that was their final match in the USL. The only team from the West gone this year, RGV as well. In their places, Memphis and Tulsa come over from the Eastern Conference. And in their places in the East, two new sides. Rhode Island, the expansion side, and then North Carolina coming back up from USL League One. They won the title last year in USL League One, so a quasi-promotion, if you will. Won the title there and in championship this year. A little bit of realignment for you. Here in 2024, still 24 teams, still 12 in each conference, still the top eight in each conference making the postseason. But the mix up a little bit different, again with Memphis and Tulsa out west, North Carolina and Rhode Island taking their spots in the east. 
Budati for Williams. Joe McCauley said that the identity of his side would be one that wants to get it into the attacking third quickly. They're not looking to play around the back. They're not looking to play in the midfield. He very simply put it, and sometimes it is a simple game, you can only score if you're close to the goal. And they want to get it as close to the goal as quickly as possible. So very direct in their nature, but a lot of technical players who like to put it on the deck just like this, looking through for Blake again. And this will be a free kick in a terrific spot for the visitors. Yeah, Donaciano there just giving away that free kick in a dangerous area. Maybe would have preferred just to hold Blake up instead. Gets punished. And it's in a position where a decent strike is going to cause Paul Blanchett all sorts of problems. Let's have a look at it again. As the ball comes in, just wondering with Donaciano whether he has to sort of stretch. He's got, he's got defenders in front of him. Gargi, the new signing, was ready to pounce as well. Perhaps an unnecessary free kick to give away. And we're talking about the defensive weaknesses of Oakland Roots last year. And that's a little example of where you don't want to give teams a chance, especially teams as good as Indy 11. It's Jack Blake who seems most intent to strike this. He's the one who's positioned it and labored over the ball. Stanley. Lindley there for looks as well. Lindley departs. It's either the right foot of Jack Blake or the left foot of Aiden Stanley. Figure from this part of the pitch favors the right foot of Jack Blake. Ball the wall. Blanchett sets up his four man wall. It is Blake, and it's saved by Blanchett. The first on his highlight reel in 2024. That's a good save from the goalkeeper. Had to get across the goal to the other side where the wall was marking it, so to speak. And we look over the wall. It's the other side of the goal. He does move his feet extremely well to get across and stretch and just get fingertips to that ball. Once again, and he's the man for Oakland Roots. Now off the corner to the back post. Still loose in front, not it down. And Blanchett snatches it. Catches a bit of contact there in the end. Tempers flaring a little bit. Not much history between these teams. Only one meeting last year. It seemed that as Blanchett came together, and it was Augie Williams' his boot was very high. And by the way, Blanchett's holding his head. He's suggesting he got kicked in the head. The ball came in wide and was bouncing around the box, and the goalkeeper quick to read the loose ball and grab it. I think Augie Williams just trying to say that there was no intention to hurt. Let's. We have a look at it, we can see exactly what happened. Ball gets headed back. All the bodies go up, the ball's gonna drop now. Goalkeeper goes, catches it. Well, I'm not quite sure I can see what happened there. Well, I can see what happened there. Uh, it's a late entry. We are about 24 hours away from the Academy Awards. So it's a late entry from Paul Blanchett. <laughs> Uh, and he seems to be all right. Uh, <laughs> but this injury timeout is brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. Anthem is transforming healthcare by improving the health of our local communities. Yeah, I didn't see any contact with him. It could, could have been an elbow. It doesn't have to be a kick necessarily. And he caught an elbow to the elbow, but <laughs> you know how it is. Dark arts of the game, Gary. Yeah. Have a word with the referee and ready to get things going again. Once again, just to make the point, Indy 11 doing the pressing, looking the more likely to score. And Oakland Roots are the home side. Yes, they are one up, but you want to try and get control of the ball as the home side, dictate the pace, try and get a second. It's all Indy 11 so far. Oh, keep it come a long way out. Well, Jet's going to scramble back now because Jack Blake comes away with it. it seemed like an interesting decision, to say the least, from Paul Blanchett. And a yellow card is issued to Jack Blake. He was turning around and firing at Elton Garcia, and maybe Elton Garcia, the referee, just had enough of the, of the back chat. Fan 
Coverage. Welcome to the 2024 USL kickoff presented by Terminix. Throughout the month of March, the USL will be kicking off across the country. Join us for all the action on ESPN and CBS Sports platforms. And a, another yellow card issued here. It's right away. Elton Garcia trying to nip things in the butt here with some of that back talk, as you mentioned, Gary. It's Guenzati who picks this one up. And you and I, I feel like we have this conversation season after season, game after game. It's just needless, and it's almost a guarantee that some point in this game, those yellow cards needlessly picked up might come back to haunt either Blake or Guenzati. And we're going to get another one here, it looks like, for Henderlong for the foul itself this time. So three yellows in about a minute and a half for Indy 11. Yeah, at least that, that one's for a tackle where Henderlong just maybe mistimes it a touch and catches the player. The other two is just for chirping unnecessarily. You, know, you can put pressure on referee, I get it. That's the idea, but you do it with a smile, you do it by pleading with the referee. You don't do it by turning and getting in his face and pointing fingers. And So, you know, two players, Gwenzadi and Jack Blake, who've now got to watch themselves. And at least Henderlong, as I said, he was trying to win the ball, maybe misjudged it. But three players, and that's something that if you're Oakland Roots, you, you, you remember which three players they are, and, uh, and you can tempt them into having another rash tackle. And you can forgive it maybe a little bit if you're Sean McCauley for Gwenzadi and Henderlong as the offside flag pops up here on Cherie. You can forgive it for them because how often do you see a forward get into a situation where yellow might be distributed? But Jack Blake, he, how many tackles mm. between now and the 90th minute, or how many instances rather, where he might have to think twice about a tackle now in the midfield as one of their holding mids? That's the one that really could come back to bite you. Uh, absolutely correct. And you know what? Understandably, it's the first match of the season. There's there's tensions and pressures, but nonetheless, deal with the referee in a way that doesn't get you in the book. Plead with them, explain, you know, cajole, all those things, but don't get aggro with the ref because that's when you end up in the book. Here's Budadi. And Lindley. Space, acres of it for Budadi here at the end line. Cuts it back for Lindley. Miss hits it, but that's a good thing almost. Falls nicely for Blake. Still loose in front. It was Hackshaw who blocked the initial strike. Not clear yet for Oakland. And now finally, they can generate some breathing room. Cherie, Rodriguez making the run centrally. Cherie just goes right after Dispey. Here's a first look at what Cherie wants to do when he gets the ball at his feet. Nearly past Dispey. A bit of defending in the end from the second team all lead defender last season. Well, that was good defending because I thought for a moment there that the Mishnah Sharia got past him. It certainly looked like it, but the big man at the back, the Cuban international, he just sort of spread those long legs and he managed to make up that ground. But again, just a little bit concerned for Oakland Roots. There's India really dominating this game. They're having shots. We saw Blake's one got blocked. You just wonder how long it's going to be before Indy do get the equalizer if Oakland Roots allow this pressure to continue. Oakland Roots and Charlie 2024 jerseys are here and selling fast. Purchase your 2024 jersey by visiting shop.oaklandrootssc.com. Right now it's Cherie donning that mosaic kit. It was in a bit of pain. Just looking at the fixtures for Oakland Roots, four of their first five games are at home. You just think from Noah Delgado's point of view, with all those home matches, if they can get and build their home into a fortress, having having now moved the turf across, they've now got their laney turf with them. You know, you get four out of the first five at home. If you can get some decent results, you shoot up the table. That's confidence and a good boost to the start of the season. And that was an issue for them last year. They were seven wins, eight losses, two draws away from home. Only four wins with six losses, seven draws at home. And that's not a mark you'd like to see, especially for a team that had been so successful at home previously. They were seven, five, and five at Laney the year before. A team that has had that past success at home wants to continue that tradition. Part of the maybe success at home for Oakland this year, part of the overall success 
in the eyes of head coach Noah Delgado, at least comes down to consistency. He felt that was the biggest issue last year. Part of it attributed to some injuries that really hurt them and some injuries coupled with national team duty that left them very bare in the cupboard. But as the year went along, there were times where they got high and got hot and won three or four. And then the lows were pretty low, as you mentioned, that stretch to end the season where they really struggled. But it was like that all season long. It was all or nothing. And that's just not a way to go through the long throws of a USL championship season. They know that they want to have more consistency, especially at home in 2024. I think that's the aim of most teams, consistently good performances. That's what you get from the sort of San Antonio's, Sac Republic's, Pittsburgh last year, Tampa Bay Rowdies, Charleston. They just regularly put the performances out there. And I think Indy 11 are a team who can do the same. You were saying they were ranked fifth in the USL in predictive performances. That's a very high position out of 24 teams. And uh, certainly you can see why they've got strength in every single position has this team in red. Yeah, preseason power rankings. Fifth in the USL Championship. You and I had a hard time as we were preparing for this game finding a weakness on this roster. So long as they stay healthy, this is a team to reckon with. Now a free kick to be dealt with by Oakland. Handed away by Njai, who committed the foul in the first place. Now it'll be a free kick coming out of the back for the Roots. Select is the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com or the latest select products, specials, and more, select the player's choice. Tamaka's taking a bit of a hit there, and the referee allowing play on for a couple of seconds, then bringing it back. I think I just noticed Jack Blake again complaining to the referee about that free kick, and I'm thinking, be careful. <laughs> you, know, you don't want to just, you know, I don't want to overdo it. I know it's enthusiasm, I know he wants, he wants his team to do well, but, you know, referees are human. You can't get at them for 90 minutes without them getting pretty annoyed with you, so just got to bring his enthusiasm down a touch there, Jack Blake. Already saw one red card impact a game here on opening night of the USL Championship season, but it didn't cost the result, as a matter of fact. It was 1-1 in San Antonio between San Antonio and Loudon in the 29th minute when Loudon went down a man. It finished 2-2. Two two. They went the rest of the way down a man, Loudon, and they equalized 90 plus 4 to steal a point on the road against San Antonio. That one just went final. It was Florian below. Another new face in a new place from Miami to Loudon, who scored 90 plus 4 to earn the draw. And it robbed a game-winning goal away from Juan Agudelo. Another new face in a new place from Birmingham over to San Antonio. Take a little bit of getting used to some of the movement we saw in the offseason. A lot of big moves around the league. That was a couple of them for you. That's a great result for Loudon, by the way, at San Antonio. Mind you, they started last season with a couple of good results, and then things went slowly downhill for Ryan Martin and company. Maybe this will be a better season for him. So Daniel bursting out ahead. They were happy with what he did in the offseason, put on some muscle. Cherie going for a goal. A little bit upset there, Tamakas was. Seemed like he wanted that ball slotted centrally. Cherie had other ideas and out for a goal kick. Oh, that would have been a great goal from Cherie from where he was. 25 yards out at a bit of an angle. He was looking for a top corner strike. And I think that was the point Tamakas was making. You know, it's a it's a real hopeful shot. Rather play to me on the edge of the box, prior one, two, something like that. But the confidence that the Haitian international has, youth international, is good to see. And wish him well, Sherry, in this role as the one of the main strikers for Oakland Roots. In that partnership with Johnny Rodriguez, who was a breakout player of 2023, had a team high 12 goals last year for the Roots. That was after he scored four goals in his first two seasons combined. Tripled his tally in just one season. Njai has Rodriguez out ahead. Tanasiano, nice job pirouetting away from Guanzani. Rodriguez, Njai. And a corner coming for Oakland. Good play from Oakland. We haven't seen much of that since they scored. Much more creative, good use of the ball, good stretching wide on the left here. And this is where you watch out for Cherie. Mentioned those four goals he scored in Champions League 
against Austin and Club Leon last year with Violette of Haiti, the amateur side, all four goals with his head. And that was part of the reason they brought him in, the player profile they found, just needing somebody to be more dangerous for them on set pieces. Insert Cherie. See if that pays dividends early on. Stian Swinger. Get it away by Lindley. And now Augie Williams can work it away. Williams wants to run. Jai slows it down. Popped up over the top for Budati. Budati brought down by Tamakas. Another free kick for Indy. Good play, Budati there. Just getting his body between the ball and Tamakas and tempting the fullback to give away the free kick. Again, a situation for Cam Lindley to whip something in there. Augie Williams would be one of those. You would fancy to be on the end of it. Lindley. Toward that back post, Blanchett got a hand to it, not away, all the way. It comes in over the bar. There's a few bodies down there, collision between goalkeeper, center back and center forward, Augie Williams. Goalkeeper's got to come and normally there is a collision. With Blanchett here, he's stretching, does get a punch to it, to be fair to the keeper. And the ball gets whipped back, Aiden Stanley just over the bar. Have a look, Blanchett comes. Stretches over top, gets a bit of a punch and takes out two players in the process. His teammate, now Logue, who seemed to get the worst <laughs> of it, actually. He's just again taking a bit of a knock. Now we go back to the free kick. Free kick given away. It, that's what puts the goalkeeper under pressure with that ball whipped in. It's a dangerous ball. Don't want to give free kicks away on the edge of the box. Just hold players up. Don't let them turn, but... Don't give them opportunities to whip something in from a dangerous free kick situation. Williams looking to run away from Gagi. line that new look back line of Oakland holding strong so far not for a lack of opportunity though for Indy 10 shots three on target still just the one shot on target for Oakland an opening goal three minutes in by that man Jesse Osedeno I think that's the only shot that Ertel's had on target is it only one yeah and the other one was the Cherie shot that ended up in the parking lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah in comparison Paul Blanchett's been busy dealing with crosses that have been flying in, getting bumped and bruised. And certainly been the busier of the two goalkeepers, which again is credit to Sean McCauley's side that they have been, as they say in Europe, the protagonist, the team that attacks more and creates more opportunities. Shepherded out of play by Logue. I wonder how long it takes for this back line to gel and come together for Oakland. All new faces all the way across among the central three in this back five. Abu Karunjai came in late last season and that swap that sent Darek Formella to Phoenix. Didn't get a ton of run with the crew. Njai. That one squeaks all the way through past everybody. Rogi Williams. Williams tries to scoop it back post. And it did take a deflection. Out for a corner, and Blanchett let it go, seeming to think it would be a goal kick. But it is a corner. Another chance to pack bodies around Blanchett and try and get a ball whipped into the danger area. It'll be an in-swinger from Eden Stanley once again. Stanley overcooks it. Long chase for Williams to flag it down. He does. And at least gets it out for a throw. Try and keep Oakland pinned in. 
In your experience, Gary, how long does it take when you have that many additions? Then I guess it's a case-by-case -case basis, but when you have that many new faces on a back line, are you looking for them to already be on the same page tonight? Are you looking at it three or four games down the line? When is that sort of tipping point where they finally gel as a unit? I think basically you, you sort of gauge how good they are over a period of time, over a number of matches. But to be fair to them, they've, they're all experienced players, Cam Riley, Gargi, Nia Logue. They've settled in well. They've dealt with a lot of early pressure from Indy 11, and they've looked really solid at the back so far. But you will only judge defenders over a long period of time. Right here, under some fire, Blanchett fumbled it initially. Gets it back, and he gets clattered into by Henderlong, who's on a yellow. And Elton Garcia is going to come in and settle things down. Doesn't look like he'll have a sending off here of Henderlong, but those are the moments where the early yellow cards could come back to bite you. 100% correct, but a little bit of a turnover. Paul, what a chance there for Indy 11. Threw one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, and the shot didn't really come in with much power. And just have a look at the pressure. We said the pressure was going to tell there's going to be a situation. The turn from Henderlong really good and gets through. There was actually a tackle there as he shoots. One of the defenders just takes it off his toe. Whoever that defender was, that is great defending. And to your point, that's why you need three good center backs, because that, that, that tackle there was absolutely crucial. And they all fit a different profile, too, according to Noah Delgado. Riley slots in as their right center back, has good pace. This one floated over the top. And actually looking to get it away. Some trouble in their own box and an acrobatic effort away from Njai. They all fit a different role on this back line. Williams. Alfred Budati over the top, headed away by Riley. Rodriguez tries to turn, he's brought down. There's a lot of green grass in front of him and it's gonna be a yellow for Callum Chapman Page. Four, make it five, oh, excuse me, four. First instinct was right, four yellows in this half already for Indy. Yep. Professional foul, he got turned there. Good little bit of play by Johnny Rodriguez and Chapman Page, the deciding he wasn't going to take any risks. Wasn't going to let Johnny Rodriguez run away with the ball. Look at that great turn. And there was contact and made sure that he couldn't build on that Johnny Rodriguez. We haven't seen him much. He's been very quiet up front. And so too, to some extent, has Mishnaida Sherry. They haven't had much to work with, to be honest. Now Logue will get it back into play. He'll be the left-sided guy of this back three. Good left foot. Cherry barreling through. Ertl has it. So Logue really fills the role that was previously Danny Barbier's. Now Barbier on Indy, but begins the season injured. Gagi comes in as the vocal leader. I feel he's really good with his feet, really good in the air, and a really good organizer back there. And Riley could step up into the midfield if need be. When Tamakas goes on international duty with El Salvador, they're comfortable in moving Riley out to the right side as a wing back. So a lot of versatility on that back line. And they are really happy with the way each one fills a different spot. Yeah, you need versatility. There's a lot of players in Oakland Roots who have international commitments. And not just Tamakas, there's a couple of others as well who'll be away. And so you do need to have players who can slot in. Neville Hackshaw as well could be another one they miss for certain matches with Trinidad and Tobago. There are Jose Denaciano coming off of a fun off-season from his club, but busy in terms of what he was doing with his national team. Denaciano, three caps for Burundi, and that includes one this past January against Algeria where he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Riyad Mahrez in the midfield for 90 minutes. Kick for Indy. Taken quickly. It's Lindley for Budadi. Thrown in front by Budadi. A late equalizer in this first half for Jack Blake. It had been building for Indy. And finally, they kick the door down. Yeah, good ball played in there to Blake. And he slots it. He had a few efforts that have been blocked. This one gets through. Not much Paul Blanchett can do. It's hit from, what, 10 yards out. Bodies in front of him, but Budadi gets the ball in really well. He's had some good crosses in this match. Gort Borg has played in from Cam Lindley, but it's a first time effort. That's what it is from Budadi. Doesn't give you time to pick up players and mark them. 
And he comes through Blake there, gets on the end of it. Good solid finish, good contact. And it, as you said, quite right, it's been coming. And Oakland didn't control the ball enough. They've paid the price. And that's come at a great time for Indy 11 just before half time. And well taken off that quick free kick as well. Wasted no time. You had Graciano trying to stand over the ball and delay the restart. Played it out to Bidati in the space. All works out in the end for Indy. And again, it's Jack Blake, who Sean McCauley pointed out, had been supplying some goals from the midfield in preseason. And he's the one who's on the board first in the regular season for Indy. Sedeno with it now. His goal came in the third minute. Blake's officially comes in the 43rd minute. All level here on opening night in Oakland with Gary Bailey. I'm Joe Malpa. Happy to have you along for the ride. Eight months of USL Championship action to follow. All beginning at tonight's starting line. We seem poised to go and look for another one here before this halftime whistle blows and we're told unofficially it'll be four minutes of added time. Wenzadi, he's gotta be careful lunging in to try and poke that ball through also on a yellow. Oh, it's tough on Oakland Roots in terms of the fact they're at home and they thought they had dealt with the pressure. But probably not a bad thing because they haven't got to grips with this game. And um, it's a chance for Noah Delgado to say, look, the equalizer came because you weren't controlling it. Get out there second half and do better. But credit to Indy 11. They've kept plugging away and they've played some neat football. And as I say, that's a very bad cross coming in from Cam <laughs> Lindley of all people. But they've played really well first half in the 11. And I think, again, Ertl's had one shot on target to deal with. That was the goal. Whereas Paul Blanchett has been peppered with efforts in this first half. 13 shots to one, four shots on target to one. 1.08 expected goals to 0.11. Everything in Indy's favor. Budadi had the assist on that opening goal. Has it now. Asiano commits the foul. Lindley waits for the overlap and uses Budadi. I don't think he was ready for that Budadi, but he gets by Njai anyway. Still with it now, pokes it along. And that shot from Blake is wide. Blake just holding his head in his hands. He felt he should have hit target. He just, he just pulled that ball a little bit. I think he's being harsh on himself. That came very quickly and he's just scored a goal. So maybe he was hoping to score that second one immediately. But again, it is Indy 11 pouring forward. It's Oakland Roots battling to try and control possession and movement. We haven't seen Johnny Rodriguez hardly touch the ball the entire first half. And that's got to be a concern for Noah Delgado. For Blake, it was his fourth goal in USL play with Indy at three last season. His 23rd in his USL championship career. He's been around for a while now. 143rd league appearance for him tonight. Rodriguez had it slip away. Njai. Donaciano. Cedeno. Opens it up for Tamakas, and it'll drift out for a corner. The way that goal was scored for Indy, it was reminiscent of a lot of the goals Oakland gave up last year. Just momentary lapses, whether it's off of a corner, off of a free kick, off of a quick restart like that from Indy. That's where they were harmed the most last year. So that's discouraging in a way that an old problem crops up in the opening match now for Noah Delgado's bunch. but. A chance to rectify it here before the end of this first half off the corner. Cherie was lurking. And it's out for a goal kick. That's been a rare corner as well for Oakland Roots. There's been a ton of them for Indy 11 and free kicks. They all add pressure and they're all great little half opportunities. And Oakland Roots, as mentioned, haven't really tested Ertl. He's had a very quiet first half as the Indy 11 goalkeeper.
match running concurrently to ours, Sacramento, Orange County. On paper, was probably the match Ooh. of the day. One to one as they get closer to halftime. Trevor Amon, offseason acquisition from USL League One's Northern Colorado, was the Golden Boot winner there last year. He gets the goal for Sacramento. And it's Seth Kasipli scoring for Orange County. Earlier results saw Memphis 2-1 over Las Vegas, New Mexico 1-0 over Pittsburgh, Miami 2-0 over Colorado Springs, a scoreless draw between North Carolina and Charleston, and a 2-2 draw between San Antonio and Loudoun. Nearing the final whistle, Hartford has a 1-0 lead on the road against El Paso. Now Brendan Burke's side, basically Colorado Springs East with the makeup <laughs> of their roster. You'll do well, Brendan Burke. <laughs> he did so well when he was at Colorado Springs. That's the excitement of this league. Lots of new coaches and coaching changes. Lots of players coming in from MLS level or coming up from USL League One. It all changes the mix, but right here, it's all level so far. Early on, Oakland gets the dream start, gets the goal three minutes in. It lasted for 40 minutes, but Gary, to be fair, probably should be maybe more than one for Indy who didn't put away a couple other opportunities. If I didn't know, I would think Indy were at home and Oakland had done well to get a, a you know, a one-one draw at halftime away from home. So being it's a home, t a home game for Noah Delgado's side, he's got to get them more on the front foot second half. Got to get the crowd riled up and put Indy eleven and in particular goalkeeper Yannick Ertel under more pressure. Opening match of the 2024 season for the Oakland Roots and Indy eleven, a flying start for the home side that didn't last. Oakland. Had some trouble at home last year, especially defending leads. Popped up in the first half, but still 45 more to play here in Oakland. Roots one in the 11 one. More to come. How can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults. They're still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. Do you like getting cash back on your credit card? A free coffee when you fill your cafe's punch card a complimentary dessert with your restaurant order? Then you'll like getting a 5% discount on your electricity with Ava Community Energy's Bright Choice service. Visit avaenergy.org to learn more about Ava's low rates for electricity. You've earned this, so hold it up high. This isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. You find diamonds in the rust, to put your own stamp on stock parts, turning metal into murals and detailing every detail. Because it's the things you make that show what you're made of. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. One to one at the break between Oakland and Indy and Oakland in their home opener sporting a new kit tonight recently partnered with Charlie to launch their new kit celebrating the 100 year anniversary of the Oakland Tribune Tower. Check out the launch video and this one of a kind drop. Stuff a hundred supermodels and one eight. Rolls 
go naughty, I'm on different time. Heard it scared for the future, I'm playing chess with mine. So you tell me stands. We not T.I.P., but we got all the rubber bands. She asked me what the patient was, I said it was a friend. Let me say an angel. Penthouse in the four season, it looking like I'm vacant. So you tell me stands. We not T.I.P., but we got all the rubber bands. Hard pressed not to put that kit among the top three around USL Championship. And the Oakland Roots during the offseason renewed a long standing partnership with Anthem Blue Cross as the front of Jersey partner. This partnership is rooted in community and is a perfect example of Oakland Roots purpose in action. We're here today with the Oakland Roots and Anthem Blue Cross. Spreading random acts of kindness. Improving the health and wellness of our communities. Anthem wanted to show up in the community in a different way and have our brand be associated with something that was authentic and was actually cool, because sometimes insurance is not cool, although it's very important. Little did I know that it would transform into something this big, but what we found in our discussions with each other is that our mission and values really align. Our mission is to improve the health of humanity, very lofty mission, um, but one that I take to heart, as well as many Anthem associates and to really improve the health of the communities in which we live and serve. Really unexpected benefit from the partnership is that it's really amplified our voice and it's amplified our voice on social media too. We didn't have as much of a social media presence and now every time I get on Instagram, I see the Anthem logo everywhere through uh, the Roots partnership. And so that has allowed people to really recognize what Anthem is doing. What's unique is that the activation at the games has been amazing. The other thing that's unique is that we're front jersey sponsors and we're not necessarily have that kind of sponsorship in the other states. And it's been a great source of brand uh, recognition and impressions like at the Oakland airport because the impressions that we get and the positive comments have been really inspiring and it allows us to show up in a very different, unique way and actually a very cool way uh, and be embedded as part of the community. And so that's why we renewed for another three years. They're hungry for the women's game. They want to see women's soccer. They want to play women's soccer. And that's what we're building at the USL. We all have goals. But let's be honest, most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Pain doesn't care who you are or why you hurt, but pain can be mastered if you know the way. Fight back with Tiger Balm's legendary herbal power. Trusted for over a hundred years, our proven blend of camphor, menthol, and essential oils tames pain with the strength and speed of the tiger so that you can rise above pain and get back to living. This is the way of the tiger. You've given us a foundation to be proud of. We build on this now. This is it now, gents. This is us from now on. Can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults, 
Their still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital. Do you like getting cash back on your credit card? A free coffee when you fill your cafe's punch card. A complimentary dessert with your restaurant order? Then you'll like getting a 5% discount on your electricity with Ava Community Energy's Bright Choice service. Visit avaenergy.org to learn more about Ava's low rates for electricity. You've earned this, so hold it up high. This isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. You find diamonds in the rust to put your own stamp on stock parts, turning metal into murals and detailing every detail. Because it's the things you make that show what you're made of. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Medellin, the mark of a fighter. A lot of news and a lot of notes to get to from the offseason, but maybe the biggest one, welcoming some new clubs, Rhode Island. Very excited to see what they can bring, Gary, in the Eastern mm. Conference. Some splashy signings they made between Albert Dequa and some others. They can be a force to be reckoned with in the East right away. Oh, especially with Albert Dequa up front, but it's never easy settling in. You can bring in the players. It's just getting that understanding of, of traveling long distances, which teams you play, what those teams are like. So good luck, Rhode Island FC. I just hope they have a really good season. I really do. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, first season coming up for the Super League, the Women's League. Received D1 sanctioning. Kicks off in August. And then you will have 35 national broadcast games in 2024 for the USL, including the one on Big CBS on April 6th between Indy and Louisville. The CBS crew will be initiated into USL with maybe the best rivalry in the league right away between Indy and Louisville. Look at some scores from around the league. They're brought to you by Visit Oakland. Get out on the town and visit Oakland to explore arts, culture, and world-class cuisine. Just had a goal that was scored from Birmingham to make it 1-0 over Phoenix. And we had some results from earlier in the day. San Antonio Loudon 2-2 stuck out to me. San Antonio at home, not getting off to the three-point start you would have expected. Absolutely, that's a fantastic point for Loudon. Uh, Hartford, what a good start for Brendan Burke and his side away at El Paso. Miami, lots of question marks over them and their roster. Was it going to be strong enough? Well, they've got off to a brilliant win at home against Colorado Springs. Pittsburgh losing, the champions of the East losing away in their opening match. So yeah, real surprise scores so far. One to one right now between Sacramento and Orange County at halftime like we are at that same one to one score. And looking ahead to the midweek El Paso, Monterey Bay. And on Saturday, El Paso, Louisville. So a busy week right out of the gates. Three game match week for El Paso Locomotive. But that one is certainly the one that catches the eye. Sacramento and Orange County, one to one on the Golazo Network. CBS Sports, part of this new partnership, the new TV deal for the league. So a lot going on right now in the Western Conference. Have one Western Conference team here in Oakland against an Eastern Conference team in Indy. Currently would be sharing a point each because they have a goal each. Second half from Oakland is on the way. How can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults. Their still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. You've earned this, so hold it up high. This isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. You find diamonds in the rust to put your own stamp on stock parts, turning metal into murals and detailing every detail because it's the things you make that show what you're made of you are a fighter and this is your reward Medellin, the mark of a fighter tonight's match is presented in part by anthem blue cross and our lineups brought to you by anthem blue cross 
are here today with the Oakland Roots and Anthem Blue Cross. Spreading random acts of kindness. Improving the health and wellness of our communities. It allows us to show up in a very different, unique way and actually a very cool way uh, and be embedded as part of the community. Tonight's match is presented in part by Anthem Blue Cross and Modelo. Take a look at highlights from the first half here between Oakland and Indy. Right out of the gate, Jesse Olsen Daniel three minutes in puts Oakland ahead. Yeah, Tabak is doing great on the right-hand side, whips it in here, and the ball just comes out to Sedeno, and he hops onto it straight away, left foot, bangs it into the corner, and then it was very much Indy 11 until just before halftime, quick free kick taken, Budadi first touch, Blake coming onto the ball, gets power behind it, nice quick move, one touch all the way through, and they deserve that equalizer, and that's how it stands at halftime. 40 minutes between the goals. We're set to begin half number two. Oakland left to right in the black. Indy right to left in the red. One sub to get you out of the half from Oakland. Danny Gomez on. Mishnaner Shari off. We'll see how that changes things for Oakland. Not a like for like switch. Bringing in a holding midfielder for a striker. And underway in half number two. That's a bit of a concern there for Mishnader Sherry. I'm sure he would have wanted to make a bigger impact on his debut for Oakland Roots coming off at halftime. And they're just going to play Johnny Rodriguez up front. So they're changing the, the sort of shape of the team, going back to the, the shape they had most of last season, which was just the one striker up front. Load a few more players in midfield because they have lost the midfield battle, as we said before the break. And that's how Noah Delgado intends to win it back. So let's see how that plays out. Just to give you the stats that prove that they had a, they struggled first half, Oakland Roots, the expected goals was 0 0.11, 0 0.1 of a goal versus 1.08 for Indy 11. So according to expected goals, Indy should be one up, one ahead. But that lovely finish by Sedeno has allowed Oakland Roots to at least be level at halftime. So that's why probably Noah Delgado has made that change and brought on the extra midfielder for a striker. Guenzani, who's on a yellow card from that first half, along with three others on this Indy side. It's Guenzani, Blake, Henderlong, and Chapman Page, all on yellows. And Jai got a piece of it, not all of it. That's Augie Williams. Night of the USL Championship season with Manchester United great Gary Bailey. I'm Joe Malfa. Good to have you with us as Oakland and Indy begin their seasons. It's Indy the aggressors really ever since the 10th minute or so. And they've got their first corner now of the second half. Sean McCauley has to be incredibly happy with what he's seen so far. In his first year as the head coach for Indy, making his coaching debut for the club. Basically every box he said that they wanted to check in his chat with us ahead of this game, they've checked so far. I'm sure we'd like to check off another goal or two so they could check off the three points. Some bodies go flying in front of goal, and Elton Garcia has to keep the peace. And McCauley was quick to point out that it's a results-based business and they want those results right away. He said, sure, they'll be happy with a good performance even if the result doesn't come on opening night. But a lot happier if the performance is good and the result is good. Well, so far the performance has been good. Grinzardi getting a lecture here. Lots of pushing and shoving and the idea is just to block that path in front of 
Blanchett, he's getting a, a warning as well not to get too physical. But it's very difficult as a keeper when, when all these red shirts, along with the corresponding black shirts, are stood in front of you. You know you, you're going to struggle to get to the ball, so you want to clear a pass, and they're, they're intent on not allowing you to get there. It's, uh, it's a tricky one. Look at that, look at that congestion around Blanchett. Stanley whips it right into that congestion. Looks like it was last off of Mark Balashvili. Blocked by Tamakas. Floated along by Stanley. Gagi heads it along. Guenzati brings it down, goes for a goal off the bar. What a strike from Guenzati. A quick whip of the right ankle generated that much power. Bar still shaking, though still tied. What a strike from a great player as well. <laughs> I, I wonder if Paul Blanchett would have got it if it dipped below the crossbar, but still to turn and hit it with that much power and that much accuracy was absolutely fantastic from a wonderful player. If you got a piece of it, it might have taken a couple of fingers with it. <laughs> what a strike from Guenzati. Well, he's seventh in the top goal scorers of all time with 70 goals. Augie Williams is 10th with 66. You've got two of the best strikers the USL's ever seen playing up front for Indy 11. And that's why so many people have them down as a real potential to win the championship this season. It'll be interesting if Augie gets a couple of good early season goals to his tally, and those two are going to be tied around 70 goals each. <laughs> the competition they'll have with each other, not only on the season tally sheet, but in the all-time USL Championship tally sheet. Here's Tamakas. And Tamakas pushing it through for Gomez. Taking down, back through for Tamakas! Oakland back ahead! That's an amazing goal came against the run of play in so many ways and for a second i'm thinking to marcus must be offside because all the red shirts were just stood there looking around looking at the at the linesman but clearly he's timed his run to perfection lovely ball put through and it was a simple task of just putting it wide of yannick ertl but as they did in the first half early on to marcus creating the problems from the right hand side waits for it keeps himself on side so it seems Aiden Stanley saying maybe not but he looks at the referee the, the assistant ref but well done to Marcus it's so interesting sometimes the guilty party is the one pleading the most with the assistant <laughs> referee on that last replay you could see it was Yunus Budani who kept him on and it was Yunus Budani who quickly raised the arm trying to convince and persuade the assistant referee but to no avail, Brian Tamakas has his first goal as a member of the Oakland Roots. Here in his second season with the club, quickly became a fan favorite. A captain for El Salvador. A large Salvadoran population here in the Bay Area. Again, quickly became a fan favorite and now gets to celebrate his first goal with the club. And they're off to the races again, perhaps. No, Rodriguez slows it down. Cedeno wanted to go, just kept his run going. Another $100 donation to the Berkeley Humane Society, generously donated by the partner LJ Cruz Company. I just wonder what Sean McCauley is going to have to say about this. It was an early goal in the first half, now an early goal in the second half. Is it a case of switching off at the start of halves, or was it just credit to Oakland Roots? And there's another yellow card coming up here, you would think. Chapman Page is already on a yellow, so this might be a case where the referee, right, wrong, or indifferent, officiates a bit differently considering the guy already has a yellow, because I'm with you, Gary. If Chapman Page didn't already have a yellow, there probably would have been no question here. He would absolutely pick one up. I think you're right, and I think Elton Garcia is seeing that that way as well. It wasn't the nasty one to try to make the tackle, and I think that's what the referee is saying. I'll let him off the hook. But to your point about the four yellow cards, you mentioned it at the start of the second half. They're all going to have to tread so carefully, and, and why get yourself in that position in the first place unless it's absolutely necessary? For me, if I'm in a coaching position, you give away a yellow card on the edge of your box. Ooh, Ooh. coming through, taking out a couple of players with him. A concerned wave to the sideline. 
somebody come out and tend to Tamakas. I believe Stanley. That's brave goalkeeping as well for the players. They're coming together, the keeper. And you can just Ooh. see his knee come up there, Yannick Ertel, as he's coming for the ball. He's got his knee up, and I think that's what catches Tamakas. Stanley might have gotten the worst of it. Stanley as well. Injury timeout brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. Anthem is transforming healthcare by improving the health of our local communities. Oh, I hope he's going to be okay. It's probably a, a dead leg from the knee of the goalkeeper. We hope it's nothing more serious than that. That change for Noah Delgado brings on Danny Gomez at halftime. Just the one player up front, Johnny Rodriguez, and that seems to make them look a little bit more solid from what we've seen so far, Oakland Roots. That's good to see him up. It's always a dangerous thing. Players are coming towards the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper's coming off his line towards them. There's going to be a collision somewhere. Goalkeeper's got his eye on the ball. So he generally lifts a knee just to protect himself because he can't see where he's going to get hit. His eyes on the ball the whole time. Generally, somebody gets hurt. In this case, it's for old Aidan Stanley. Stanley able to get off the field on his own power. Looks like he'll be able to continue, and it's 2-1 to one Oakland. They scored just minutes after. It was nearly 2-1 the other way on this Guenzotti strike off the crossbar. It's a fantastic strike. I, I think the goalkeeper's got a hand behind it. Look at Blanchett. He would have saved it if it had dropped below the crossbar, but that's beside the point. To turn and hit it that hard and that accurately, what a strike. Henderlong, they're down back behind the play for the Roots, but play continues. Henderlong for Budadi on the overlap. Henderlong has to be careful going in himself. He's on a yellow card as well, remember? It's basically like a game of bingo. You got, mm. what was it, a few spaces covered just about everywhere. <laughs> You're just waiting for that one, or who's it gonna be? Who's gonna get that second yellow? How many times has it been already that Henderlong or Gwenzadi or Chapman Page have gone in and given Elton Garcia something to think about? You do have Elliot Collier on the bench for Indy 11. What a good player Collier is and a good striker. So you might start looking at Henderlong and think perhaps young player, not so experienced, bring him off and get Collier on. At least you get one of the yellow cards off and you bring some fresh legs on. So I wonder if Sean McCau McCauley's busy thinking through that sort of option at the moment. Henderlong coming from the college ranks at Indiana. Powerhouse nationally, played in a college cup with Indiana. Over the top now, it settles nicely for Gwenzadi. And it blocked out for a corner. And now Logue. That's normally where he's so dangerous, Gwenzadi. He's able to chest and volley almost in one move. That one didn't quite work out for him. Now another corner for Indy 11. They really have wrecked them up in this game. And then again, you'll see Numbers all pouring to that near post to block the way for Blanchett. Corner number seven for Indy. Let's see if it's a lucky number seven. Outswinger this time instead of the inswinger had been Stanley every time previously from that end of the field. They back out that way for Lindley. Overlap from Budadi. Blocked by Rodriguez. Space here to operate for Danny Gomez. Hackshaw, here comes Augie Williams. Hackshaw sensed it, finds Tamakas. Ryan Tamakas feeds it in. Savino couldn't do it off the turn. It looks like Stanley just went back down behind the plate. Tried to give it a go again after that collision with the keeper, Ertl. Just went down on his own volition again, behind the plate, in their own 18, Indy. Marie just spotted it. That's from that uh, collision earlier with the goalkeeper, the dead leg. It's 
probably got to the point where Stanley doesn't want to take any more risks. Pressure now on Indy 11 to come back yet again for a second time in this match. And it's a, it's a more compact Oakland Roots with the extra player in midfield. It might be more difficult to break down this time around. At the Blue Cross is transforming healthcare by improving the health of our local communities. There's a couple of options for Noah Delgado to add to the changes. He's got the likes of Trayvon Reed on the bench. Napa Matsoso. So you expect to see those changes for Oakland Roots and a couple of other options for Indy 11 as well. This is normally about the time that coaches start to make changes. And in Aidan Stanley's case, I think they might have no choice if he's not confident of continuing to play. Josh O'Brien is up and ready for Indy. Stanley can't go. 21-year-old from Dublin, Ireland. Here in his first year in USL Championship. Josh O'Brien. Stanley wants to continue, it seems. He's trying to push it. Let's see if his coach gives him the opportunity, though. They had O'Brien scrambling up and getting ready. A bewildered look on the face of Stanley right now, who seems to want to stay in, but I don't know if his coach is going to allow him. The fourth official still has the board in hand, and she's looking over too confused. Is it happening? Is it not happening? <laughs> and she just put the LED board back down, so for now, they're not going to make the change. They were ready to. We'll keep an eye on it. And it's out for a goal kick now on the opposite end. For a great way to enjoy a night out with friends, family, or co-workers, check out the discounted group ticketing options for your next birthday or party. Secure your tickets by visiting oaklandrootssc.com slash tickets or call 510-488-1144. Now we're gone. Half hour remains. Oakland 2, Indy 1. Good to have you with us this evening alongside Gary Bailey. I'm Joe Malfa. It was three minutes into the match for Oakland. 40 minutes later, Indy equalized. And then just five minutes into the second half, Oakland went ahead again. Two strong starts to each half for Oakland. They like to close out the second half better than they did the first. That's where they conceded the equalizer to Indy. Just wonder if they can get a win here. Oakland Roots, we mentioned they have a whole bunch of home matches. The next match is at home. Charleston, that's not an easy one. Then Phoenix away against the champions. But then Las Vegas home and Monterey Bay home. You would think they've got a chance there. So if they can get, you know, four wins out of the first five or something along the lines like that, three wins and a draw perhaps, a couple of draws, they'll really be at the top of the table and then it'll give them confidence for the away stretch coming up after that. Jack Blake, Lindley, death little touch over the top, back for Blake. Jack Blake taken down cleanly in the eyes of Elton Garcia. No argument either for Blake. Perhaps partly because he picked up a yellow for arguing in the first half. <laughs> yeah, and probably Sean McCauley had a couple of words with him at halftime. It's to just calm it down, Let's get on with the game. Cedeno. This lung-busting run from Riley, but Cedeno cuts in and goes for goal himself. Had it blocked, and Asiano for Riley. It's off of Riley, and out for a goal kick. USL Championship is on CBS Sports and ESPN platforms all season long. Catch live matches and expert analysis every day on the CBS Sports Golasso Network and ESPN+. Plus. Go to uslchampionship.com for the complete USL TV listings. Udadi with the assist on the Indy goal. Henderlong over the top looking for Williams. And Blanchett has it gathered. It seemed like Augie Williams was destined to make a trip out to Oakland to begin this season. Oakland will welcome Charleston next week. So whether it was still with his old club <laughs> or now with his new club, he was going to be making yeah. this trip. 
And the Oakland Roots, as mentioned, are back at home on March 16th against the Charleston Battery. Limited single game tickets still available. Purchase yours now before they sell out. And a corner coming for the Roots. Yeah, much better from the Roots second half. Really does look a more balanced side with Danny Gomez coming in. Difficult for Sherry that he had to be taken off, but they were just losing the midfield battle too much to Indy 11 first half. Now this second half, it looked, as I say, much more solid, much more controlling of the game. Maybe we'll see more of Johnny Rodriguez. He was very quiet first half. Cedeno, Graciano, playing this one up. It is Cedeno driven near post. Rodriguez was lurking right in front of Yannick Ertl. Quinzani wants to run. Blake has a look forward. He discovers Guenzati. Has it needed a better ball in there? Augie Williams at the far post. You know how good he is heading the ball. He did a, a cross to the back stick for him to attack. All of a sudden, it's Indy who look out of sorts in the attacking half. Plays like that not connecting the way they were in the first half. Another moment here. And again, a lack of a connection. Well, that one, I'm not so sure. Maybe that was Augie Williams' fault because he was at the far post. He went and made a run at the near post, and the ball came in to where he was stood only a few seconds earlier. But maybe this is the sort of understanding new players coming in. What sort of runs do they make? As the season goes on, you get to know where they're likely to run. You get to read the plays a lot more often. Early on here, new players taking time to settle in. Elliot Collier, looks like he's gonna get his chance for Indy, just took off the penny. Speaking of, Andy Stanley, with the ball in hand, has stayed out there. Just caught a glimpse of the fourth official's board. It's gonna be for Carson Henderlong, so the exact sub you called for a few moments ago, Gary. Getting Henderlong off, getting the experienced Collier on with some fresh legs, and one of those four yellow cards now finally off the field. Yeah, it just makes sense, and Collier is such a good player and a good good in the air, attacks the ball. You get him and Augie Williams in the box and whipping some crosses, there could be a few problems there for Oakland Roots. Johnny Rodriguez. Jai. It's Gomez. Dealt with some injuries last year, Danny Gomez. Sort of came out of nowhere to win the starting job in that role out of necessity. At the end of May, everybody else in front of him was basically injured. At that point forward became a mainstay. Went healthy for the Roots. First to go from their USL2 Project 510 side. To the Roots' first team. Blake turns and hits. Gonzati gonna shake free. Hop back over the top. Loose in front flag. Stay down. Collier is there. Once again, Blanchett so quick off his line, brave as well to go diving on that ball. But he just killed the problem before Indy 11 took advantage of it. Really has played well, Paul Blanchett. Not easy, not you know comfortable shots. It's all the, the tricky stuff for goalkeepers, the stuff around the edge of the box. Oh, Ooh. heck of a finish. <laughs> what a Johnny finish. Rodriguez. What a finish. <laughs> Put that down in your list of goals that don't count. But you wish they sort of did because it would have looked wow. fun. <laughs> That's why he's such a good player, the top goal scorer. A cheeky in smile the club's on his history. face there, too, as he turned to the referee. <laughs> he's leading scorer with 19 goals in his Oakland Roots career. A warning to Indy 11 not to leave him unattended around the box, Johnny Rodriguez. A little bit of history for him for the Roots, as you mentioned, his spot on the goals list, but. He is the only remaining original Oakland route from their Nisa days. Oh, wow. The only other player who was on that list was 
last year's backup goalkeeper. Taylor Bailey has since moved on. Johnny Rodriguez remains as the only original Nisa Oakland route. And the progress he's made year over year, too, sure. has really endeared him to these fans. Looks like Eunice Badotti's in a bit of trouble there to see exactly what happened. It's hard to see in the background there, but just is there a twist of an ankle perhaps? No, it's his left, it's his left ankle. By the looks of it. Anyway, whatever happened has caused him a lot of pain. They are dealing with his left ankle there. And he hit the ground a few times as in frustration as if to say, I know this is hurt and I know it's going to be a problem. Crucial stage of the game now. If Oakland roots the home side, they want to see it out. 20 plus minutes to go. Maybe get a third one and just make it a, a, a more relaxed last 20 minutes. And of course, the opposite for Indy 11. They want to get at them, want to get an equalizer, and then hopefully a winner from their perspective. If they don't go ahead and find the insurance goal, Oakland, what this is going to become is a really interesting early season exercise for Noah Delgado's bunch. They struggled last year defending leads late in games, and now you have a completely new look back line, and you struggled at home last year, so all those mixing into one. A new back line trying to defend a late lead at home. Can you right a lot of the wrongs from last year with some new faces in the mix? It's gonna be an interesting early test. And a yellow card in hand here for Elton Garcia is gonna to go to Elliot Collier. So part of the reason he came on for Carson Henderlong was getting a yellow card off the field, and Collier Brings it right back out of the field. It's five yellow cards and not a single one to Oakland Roots. It's good discipline from the home side. But he is a big boy, Elliot Collier. Well, Hackshaw will come off for Napo Matsoso. I'd be curious to see who he hands off the armband Tamarcus. to. Tamakas. Mm. We're told coming into this game, and again, remember last year Oakland had Emra Clementa as the main captain, Jojo Nane as a captain as well. That time when Clementa wasn't on the field, Nane is still there now as an assistant coach, but when those two weren't there, Tarek Murad would sometimes wear the armband. All three of them are gone. So it was a big mystery who would be the captain of this group. It was Hackshaw. And with him coming off, you wondered who he'd hand it off to. Have your answer there about the leadership group of the Roots. Hackshaw and Tabakas leading the way. And I think Cam Riley is the other vice captain along with the new captain now, so Tabakas. Those players will both be going away with their national teams in short order here in March, so Cam Riley might be wearing that armband sooner rather than later, assuming that Hackshaw and Tabakas are both called up by their respective national teams. Can't watch the match, turn on Sirius XM FC 157, North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access Tuesdays at 7 Eastern. Also hear live matches from the USL, MLS, Premier League, and more, all on Sirius XM FC 157 and the new Sirius XM app. minutes plus stoppage time as Indy looks for this equalizer. Oakland content to just counter now and seems like there was something on there. Cedeno was looking through for Graziano. Well, it's an Indy side who generally have done well on the road. They had eight wins last year on the road. That's their best in their history. So be wise for Oakland Roots not to assume anything at this stage. Especially when you've got the likes of Audrey Williams and Gwenzadi up front now, Elliot and Collier, those are all... If they get service, one thing they haven't been able to do is get enough service as yet, but if they do get service last 10, 15 minutes, they could cause all sorts of problems for Blanchett and company in defense. 5,146 the crowd tonight at Pioneer Stadium for the Aroots home opener. And they are closer and closer to celebrating a season opening victory but not out of the woods yet 
Gary, I guess there's a such thing as uh, maybe looking at, you know, playoffs a little bit too soon. We are on opening day after all. <laughs> but if you are the Roots, this would be a really nice night to pick up three points because you had three other matchups of Western Conference teams against Eastern Conference teams where the Eastern Conference team won. But so so looking for Rodriguez and smothered by Ertl. So those are three instances where we had those points staying out east. Birmingham just went final, beat Phoenix 1-0. Hartford beat El Paso 1-0. And then earlier in the day, Miami beat Colorado Springs 2-0. So it's about as early as you can be for something like that, but it'd be extra sweet for Oakland if they can pick up those three points. Absolutely, and as mentioned, with four of the five at home, you get on a good run early on, and you can be near the top of that league, if not top, and then loads of confidence starts coming into the team, which is why it's always good to be at home early on. Interesting, this is Indy's seventh opening game, and all seven have been away from home. And you came up with a very interesting theory that it has to do with the cold weather there this time of the year. But every single opening match is away from home, which makes it tough for Indy. Your giveaway. And now it's Williams who does take it away, but the assistant referee spotted a foul and raised the flag himself. Elton Garcia seemed to be on top of it. Anyway, our center referee. And now we will see Josh O'Brien finally come on. We thought it would be for Aiden Stanley this whole time, who went down injured initially, but instead it's Yunus Budadi who also went down with a bit of a knock who comes off for Josh O'Brien. He's laboring as he's coming off the field, Yunus Budadi. Two sides to every coin, by the way. I mentioned all those points staying out east in the east-west matchups, so it would be extra sweet for Oakland, extra bitter for Indy on a night where all those Eastern Conference teams picked up three points. You up against the Western Conference team to come away empty-handed. I mean, it's absolutely too early to be having that conversation. But when you look ahead at the parity of this league and how slim the margins might be this year, you might look back at week one and say, maybe that was the week where we lost it or we won it. Yeah, a long way to go in this league. <laughs> <laughs> difficult to say. Mind you, you and I were trying to pick the teams that wouldn't make the player from the two divisions. It's a and difficult it, exercise. There's so many good teams and there's so, there's so so many teams with board players and you're not quite sure how they're going to, like Rhode Island, got some very good players, but will they gel? Graciano, Myrtle has it. I made the comment to you that in the Western Conference, I think there's a clear-cut top team who should win the conference, and that's Sacramento. And there are two teams who I won't mention who I certainly don't think will make the playoffs, but from seed two to 10th place, yeah. you could put those in any order, and I'd believe you. Yep, so many good players in this league and so many good coaches as well. And I mean, we've seen Loud and Loud and normally struggle. Ryan Martin does a great job with very limited resources. And he said, this season, we're going to get more money and more players. And have a look, a draw away at San Antonio tonight. With well done, one of those Loudon. players who they brought in, Florian Velo, scoring the equalizer in stoppage yeah. time. Yeah. So there's no easy size. Las Vegas lights. They, they, was, they really struggled last season. They've spent a whole ton of money bringing players in. So, wow, it's... Um, I think you made the comment earlier tonight on social media, this is the best USL lineup you'd ever seen. I would agree with that. I think it just gets stronger and stronger every year. Just talking to some of the other people in and around the league, I mean, it's easy to say that. It might sound like we're trying to be car salesmen and drum up the season, but it's genuine. I, yeah. If you look top to bottom on these rosters and you look at how evenly matched these teams are, there's no reason this shouldn't be the best, most exciting season the league has seen. And that's a good thing. That should be an envelope that continues to be pushed season after season. Long throw coming from Stanley. Flicked along by Collier. Good step to win it back from Chapman Page. The shot blocked. Attack still alive though for Indy. And it's O'Brien pushing a bit too far at the end line. Out for a goal kick and he's getting in the face now of Danasiano. A little bit chippy there, but Blind Jet just says to Donaciano, settle down, we're 2-1 up, don't get involved. Don't do anything silly. We've got control of this match. There's good play from Donaciano just to see the ball over the line. So again, the question you asked, and it's what we're waiting to see, is this an Oakland Root side who this year can take a one-goal lead all the way to the end and 
bag the three points or will they cough it up like they did so many times last season especially towards the end of the season you do get a sense with that back three of cam riley gargi and nile Logue, they're a lot tougher mentally physically hard players and they're going to be extremely difficult to break down as indy 11 are finding out today Tommy williams has been awfully quiet in the second half that's something that could change at a moment's notice. Can never lose track of him. Especially in a moment like this. On the restart. Taken quickly. It's how they score their opening goal. Quick restart on Budani in space. Cut it back for Jack Blake. Brian waited on it. Out for a throw. Zadi for O'Brien. Good tackle. Served up centrally. And it comes out for Blake. And never really had a chance in the end. Yeah, well, this is an indie side who, that when they need to raise their game, they can. Just looking last year against the top three teams in the East, that's Pittsburgh, Charleston, and Tampa Bay Rowdies. They were unbeaten, home and away. Oh, trouble there for Cam Lindley as well. They were unbeaten, home and away against the top three teams. So this indie side can really compete when they have to and when they want to. They need to show that same form here tonight in these last 10 minutes. Jack Blake has their lone goal tonight. Intercepted by Cam Riley, former teammates, those two in San Diego. Riley carries. Riley, the last touch was too much, and he commits the foul. He's comfortable coming up from the back line. Spends a lot of time actually operating as a six in the midfield for San Diego. But more comfortable on the back line. 2019 draft pick for Sporting Kansas City. He spent a couple of years in USL Championship with SKC2. And on to San Diego, and now Oakland. Blake, nice find in space. It's O'Brien. O'Brien drives it in. All the way across, and finds Stanley. Blocked out for another corner. At some point, if you're Indy, you have to capitalize. It's eight corners now. Yeah, they're putting the pressure on now, as they did through most of the first half. It's another set piece. It's very difficult for Blanchett to get to the ball, as mentioned. There's going to be one of these where he won't get it, and then there's going to be a big scramble in the box. And look at the traffic around him again. No room to maneuver. Augie Williams back into the mix, and I think Blanchett got a touch to it. He did. It's out for another corner. It'll be the ninth of the match for Indy. I think the referee is going to make them go to the opposite side them go initially was pointing to the opposite corner went over the goal dead center so I guess take your pick another in swinger toward that back post from Lindley going for the Olympico he's hobbling Lindley watch him run back there it's not a comfortable run it was a bad corner though goes out without giving the strikers anything to aim for rather stick it on the edge of the six yard box or ten yards and let your big center halves and your big strikers at least try and win the ball. That one just goes straight out. Nice and easy for Paul Blanchett at the end. But he doesn't look happy. He's still <laughs> pleading with the referee. Not sure what about. He'll be a lot happier if he can get through these next eight minutes plus stoppage time. And pick up the three points. Will it be with an insurance goal? Cedeno. Free kick on the way for the Roots. So this is something Elton Garcia does really well as a referee. He gets to the, the sort of scene of confrontation very quickly. Calm players, tries to get to them before they start getting in each other's faces. You can see here for a moment, is, is there going to be trouble here? Sedeno goes down, look at Elton Garcia. He's right there, literally within a yard or two. Ready to settle everything down. an area where Oakland wanted to improve as well. 
Now, Misha Air Shuri, their big acquisition that'll help on these set pieces, subbed off at halftime. Cedeno and Denaciano stand over it. It is Denaciano, the in swinger. Floated back in. Gagi wanted something spectacular. Didn't quite line it up. A reminder that is a center back. Well, can imagine on debut, you stick one in the top corner <laughs> on the volley. It would have been very impressive. He's had a very steady evening commanding that back mm. line for Oakland. 231 appearances across all his stops in Europe, mostly in Georgia and North Macedonia. That includes 18 appearances in some form of qualifying for either UEFA Champions League, Europa League, or Conference League. So at the highest levels in Europe as well, as far as competitions go. 27-year-old is capped on various youth levels for Georgia, from U17 through U21. We're very excited about bringing Gagi in. Jack Blake not excited about that ball, just smashing him in the face. And Elton Garcia will stop play. Make sure he's okay. Good refereeing. Always careful with the head injuries and concussion protocols, etc. Stop the match immediately. It's been a very good refereeing performance. One of one of the top referees in the USL, Elton Garcia. And he, he really has refereed well, but a very firm referee as well, as Jack Blake has found out. And Jack Blake continues to. <laughs> make his case players have long memories because there's obviously nothing that jack blake was annoyed about right here he wasn't fouled he got smashed in the face it happens yeah. but he's arguing with elton garcia about who knows what from earlier in the match as he's ushered <laughs> off long-term memories some players have Williams chested it down for Collier. And he were preparing another change. It was Roberto Molina who pulled the jersey on it. Williams still trying to joust his way through. Outlet finds Cedeno. See how Cedeno orchestrating the counter. Had eyes for Alucarn Jai. Now it's Rodriguez. Johnny Rodriguez. And it doesn't last year. Doesn't have his first yet in 2024. It's a lovely little counter attack there from Oakland Roots. Options left and right, and then in the end they go through the middle. Johnny Rodriguez, but Cedeno cuts inside here. And it was the players left and right, but Johnny Rodriguez was in the middle, gets it. He needs to go the other side of the goal because Matsoso was running in, and a miss hit shot could end up being a pass instead. Just totally misses the target. Tyler Gibson who comes off for Roberto Molina. A roar from the crowd because they just announced the sellout in-house. Roots fans take pride in that. Had a number of sellouts over the last couple of years. The fan base very passionate about this club in this area. why you look around some other sports some other organizations have left Oakland in recent years and this is their true club to support now and they have loved this club the way the club it loves the fans if they do hold on to this result I would, I would think you'd have to credit Noah Delgado with that halftime switch from two strikers, just time to one, got an extra player in midfield in Gomez. And the second half, they have looked so much more solid. The gaps haven't been there that were there in the first half. Indy have struggled to create as many opportunities as they did first half. And that's, I think, largely down to the, the reconstructed side that Noah Delgado put together in that second half. Think of when the Roots were at their best, maybe in 2022, with the likes of Eduardo Rito on one side before the move to Hartford. 
They were at their best when they were controlling the midfield and giving the wingbacks license to join the attack. And what happened? At halftime, he brings on the extra midfielder. They start controlling the midfield. Tamakas has license to roll forward, and he scores the goal. Now it's Mungkar and Jai. He's trying to find his way through, taken down. And he will pick up a yellow, I believe, for simulation. Well, that does seem to be the decision. I think he went past the defender and then went down, which you can't really do. You've got to go down under contact or not at all. And now he seems to have some cramp. Let's have a look at it again. There's, there's no contact and he goes to ground. Yep. So I don't know if it's more of embarrassment. He doesn't want to get up, having got the yellow card for diving. He'd rather get up, having recovered from an injury. <laughs> so it does seem like he's a little bit tired then. It has been a really good performance by Oakland Roots in terms of the effort they've put in, the runs they've made, the closing down. It's a very good Indy 11 side, as we've said, and second half, they've matched them, Oakland Roots. And if he's not able to continue, Justin Rasmussen, you'd imagine would be the replacement. No Memo Diaz, remember serving that suspension for the red card he picked up in last year's season finale. Okay, Elton Garcia saying, you know what, if you can't play on, let's get you off the pitch, because we need to finish this game. Now keep this all in mind, you can see a hefty number of stoppage time tacked on at the end here now that we're officially into the 90th minute. Difficult situation for a uh, there is Rasmussen as you say uh, for a referee because you could be slowing the game down you could be faking an injury and saying uh, I'm just going to kill the game stop Indy from getting any momentum but you can't then accuse the player without being sure so and I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying he is and it doesn't look like he's faking it to be honest it looks like he really is so he, he is coming off yeah. for Rasmussen he just did announce the sub yeah but the, he's, he's managed to slow the game down in the process in Jai so you never know whether players are, are, are really very injured or just a little bit injured and and doing something tactically and as a referee not much you can do about it that nine not for the sub that nine for the stoppage time nine minutes of additional time here at the end of this one as Jai comes off and Rasmussen comes on. Elsewhere, by the way, Sacramento did pull ahead 2-1 on Orange County. A brace for Aman in his debut for Sacramento. It seemed like their only issue last year, Sacramento was not having a true number nine they could count on. They go out, they get Aman from USL League One. He's got two goals in his first match. So if they solve that problem, that's an even scarier Sacramento team. The only glaring weakness that club had last year. Augie Williams is offside, leaves it for Molina. But because he had made a motion toward playing the ball, they still get him for the offside. I just wonder what Sean McCauley will take away from this match, assuming the result stays as it is. Very good first half. But he'll say, you know what, we conceded a goal early on in the first half, early on in the second half, where we switched off, where we're not organized, where we're just too relaxed. And if so, how do they fix it? They have 20 shots compared to just eight for the Roots, but efficiency, not their strong suit tonight. They have more than double the shots the Roots have taken, but it's only five shots on target to three. And the Roots have scored on two of those three shots on target. Danasiano puts it back for Rasmussen. Cedeno for Matsoso. Napo Matsoso slipping as he hit it. See what he was trying to do, knock it back the way the ball had come and try and catch the goalkeeper moving across his goal in the wrong direction, but just no power behind it from Matsoso. He's a lively player. He's put some energy into this match as well, coming on as a sub. The issue for Oakland last year in that midfield was just injury after injury. Every single player who was in that group missed at least some time, but so-so included. Molina whips it in. 
Logue flicks it away. Donaciano, Matsoso, Gomez, and Jojo Nane, the four who really accounted for those two defensive midfield spots. And again, all four missed lengthy periods of time, sometimes overlapping, leaving them really bare at that position. Never really just put it all together health-wise in 2023, Oakland. Football 2024 is here. Live your dream, rep your team, and play as your favorite USL Championship club. It's been his favorite quiet night for Gwenzidi. We've seen him on the occasion, odd occasion, for the man who was the top goal scorer last season for Indy 11 with 11 goals. Most shots on target, 25. Just felt that he could have been a little bit more involved in this match. Maybe it's a case of, of him and Augie Williams occupying the same spaces at times and getting each other's way. It's something you're gonna to have to figure out as they go along when you get two great strikers. Who plays where and who gets the lead role and do you keep swapping it one up, one behind? Stuff that Sean McCauley's gonna to have to figure out in the next week or two. Douglas Martinez, they hope coming back healthy as well in short order. Joining that group, perhaps getting the start over Hender Long. Ideally, that would be his three up there, Martinez, Guenzani, and Williams. That was the three that was so successful in preseason. Blanchett has to just punch this one away. Not sure if that was a shot or a cross, but Blanchett wasn't taking any chances. And Lindley, Aiden Stanley. To Molina, the C's part four. Molina taken down. Tim Garcia says play on and a goal kick. Yeah, I didn't see much contact to be honest. Some familiarity there between those two guys. Molina, Tamacas, both senior national team players for El Salvador. Both started that CONCACAF Nations League game together against the United States a year and a half ago. I'm sure they're having a laugh down there, bottom left of your screen. Three and a half minutes of the nine that were added still remain. I think if Oakland Roots were to look at any player for this victory, of course, you, you look at Tamarcus, who made the first, scored the second, probably as a man of the match, but you also look at the goalkeeper and the three central defenders in front of him. That's so-so. One on the ground. All the way out for a goal kick. The same Blanchett and Riley, Gargi, Nile, Logue in front of him. They've been really solid. They've taken a lot of pressure. A lot of credit should they get all three points here today. I'm sure McCauley was chatting to us. He was talking about the fact that he wants three points more than anything else. Well, he hasn't got that. The next thing he said was, has the performance been good enough? And I think it has first half. I think second half they've struggled to be creative to get good opportunity. There's Gwenzardi very deep trying to get the ball. So it's a bit of a mixed bag for Sean McCauley. First half, their expected goals after some readjusting ended up at 0.96. Second half, it's been 0.26. So there's your stark contrast between their creativity and their chance generation in the first half versus in the second. And now all sorts of contact and emotion spilling over. Yellow card issued to Denaciano. For a second, he was giving that to yeah. Blake, and I was about to say he's already got one. A minute and a half remaining. 
we imagine there's been some stoppage within stoppage time, so perhaps up to Elton Garcia how far this does go into the night. Johnny Rodriguez is leaking out on the left, and that will be a yellow card for Cam Lindley. He's not one of the four who already had one for Indy. But that is a wise veteran yellow card that he's not arguing because the next touch from Cedeno would have been, you'd imagine, a ball into the path of a wide open Johnny Rodriguez who might have been free to goal. 100% yeah, professional foul, had to be done. And that's why you don't get early yellows. You keep, you keep that yellow in your pocket until you actually need it. And it was very lucky it was him on the ball and not someone like a Jack Blake already had a yellow. Crowd getting all fired up as well in his last couple of minutes. I think it was Gagi who waved them along it to get them back into it. And giving the group that little extra here in the closing seconds to pick up the three points. Maybe not before one last chance for Indy. Launched forward, no touch on it from Collier. Attacks still alive, and this is going to be a corner. Nine minutes were given, nine minutes have elapsed. This could be the final play of the match, and here it comes, Yannick Gertl. Well, well, if that box wasn't congested before, <laughs> it is certainly now. Good luck, Paul Blanchett, getting through all those bodies. Some opening night drama whipped in, headed away by the roots, not fully clear yet. A glance at the watch from Elton Garcia. Blake sends it ahead. Stanley tries to get a cross in. Fronted by Matsoso, and that'll do it. Oakland wins it 2-1 on opening night. Brian Tamaka scored the game winner. The fired up Jesse El Cedeno scored the opener. And the Roots are on their way in 2024. Uh, well done, Noah Delgado. Good change at halftime. Seemed to make all the difference. Well done to the defense of Oakland Roots. And they took their chances. Great delight amongst the crowd, and they really battled to get these three points here today, Oakland Roots, against a very good Indy 11 side who I felt first half outplayed the Roots, but second half they found Danny Gomez, a player who could help them block those runs that Indy 11 were making in the end. Fantastic start to the season for the Roots. A hard earned three points for the home side, and we'll wrap things up on the other side of this quick break. Oakland two, Indy one. can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults. They're still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. Do you like getting cash back on your credit card? A free coffee when you fill your cafe's punch card. A complimentary dessert with your restaurant order? Then you'll like getting a 5% discount on your electricity with Ava Community Energy's Bright Choice service. Visit avaenergy.org to learn more about Ava's low rates for electricity. You've earned this, so hold it up high. This isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. You find diamonds in the rust to put your own stamp on stock parts, turning metal into murals and detailing every detail. Because it's the things you make that show what you're made of. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. How can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults. They're still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, 
Kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital. Celebration still ongoing here at Pioneer Stadium where the Roots take it 2-1 to one over Indy 11. Take a look back at the highlights from this match and the action started in the very early stages. Three minutes in, Oakland's first goal of the season belongs to Jesse El Cedeno. Yeah, Tamakis does well on the right-hand side here. Nice little build-up. When he gets the ball back, he whips it across. You think maybe one of the main strikers will get on it, but up pops Cedeno, hits it with his left foot. And Yannick Ertl, not much he can do about that. Then just before halftime, quick free kick take, and Yunus Badadi does brilliant. First time ball, finds Jack Blake. He hits it first time as well with power, through bodies and everything else, and beats Paul Blanchett. And it was a very fair equaliser. They'd really done well first half in the 11. You wondered if they would go on second half and do even better, but a nice little tactical change by Noah Delgado. Danny Gomez comes on, striker goes off. They look more solid. Then Tamarka starts this, look at him, he keeps going, plays the ball, gets it back from Donisiano there, and he's onside. Difficult to see if he was or not from our side, but given onside and just tucks it past the goalkeeper, and that turned out to be the winning goal. And the ball that was played to Donisiano was from the halftime substitute, Danny Gomez, who really helped stabilize that midfield in half number two. So the right button pushed by Noah Delgado. And a look at the full-time stats. Really one-sided in terms of the shots. As far as Indy is concerned, controlled the ball, but just not efficient enough with their opportunities. Yeah, first half, I thought they were excellent and had a load more shots and corners. They put pressure on. But again, credit to, to Paul Blanchett and the Oakland Roots goal and his three new centre-halves in front of him, Cam Riley, Gargi and Niall Logue. They all dealt with a lot of big pressure from Indy 11. They did concede the one, but they managed to hold on to that lead. Something they struggled to do last season. They've started this season with the three points, holding on to a league, and it all looks positive for the Roots. Indy will visit Memphis next week. Oakland will host Charleston. Thank you for joining us this evening. Oakland Roots and BART want to make sure you get home safely. Visit BART.gov slash planner to plan your trip home. Now, the crew that makes this possible, and my broadcast partner, Gary Bailey, I'm Joe Malva saying so long from Pioneer Stadium. The Roots win at 2-1. to one. Go to sleep. You'll lose an extra hour of it tonight. Make sure you set your clocks and come back all week long and next weekend for more action in the USL Championship. Good night, everybody. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.